Hey folks, Killman here again. How are you all doing? How are you? How are you? 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 I'm sure I told you not to be here next time I did a recording. Away with you! Away! So, those of you who've been keeping up with current sort of Killman events will know that during the recording of my Starsky Hutch video, the roof of my conservatory caved in during a ferocious tempest. And then, of course, in a development, I fell through the roof whilst trying to fix it. And then, in a further development, I realised I would have to get a man in, a real man, to do the job and fix it for me. The day came when that man was to arrive and fix said conservatory. I took a day off work to be there to make him a cup of tea whilst he was doing manly work. He never turned up. He didn't reply to my text messages asking him where he was. I now have shark fins circling, circling in the conservatory because it's our fucking ocean out there. Jesus Christ. I can never trust anyone these days, anyone to do the bloody job. Anyway, enough of all that baloney. We can live, we can cope. I've summoned you all here for another grand rousing theme of musical machismo, of muscular musical mayhem, <laughs> heroic fanfares and pulsating rhythms of just sheer valiant crusading kill all the bad guys and rattle your sabres. You haven't got a sabre, use one of these because Chuck Norris does. Chuck Norris! Norris doesn't do press-ups. He pushes the wild away from him. That's what he does. So, what you may have heard in the background here is a fantastic, very catchy, you know, dynamic sort of beat. Rhythmic, militaristic, gung-ho. Yes, it is the Delta Force. Chuck Norris's finest hour. Ah, that's debatable. That's debatable. He has many fine hours. But back in the 80s, you know, the synthesizer ruled, didn't it? Alan Silvestri, who had just done Back to the Future and was about to do Predator, and then fucking millions, millions more movies, including up and coming Avengers, uh, Avengers Endgame. He'd done Infinity War and Avengers, and he's still, he's still knocking them out, left, right, and centre. Heroic themes! The guy was born to do it. So, the 80s, yes, terrorism, as ever, was rife. Now, Delta Force was, in reality, Colonel Charles Beckwith, American, who was actually trained and served with the Brit British SAS, took their idea for this highly, you know, mobile, quick reaction special forces unit and took that model back to America and created the Delta Force. Sadly, the Delta Force's first ever mission in Tehran to rescue the um, the students who were held hostage there back in, I can't remember the year, <laughs> but Jimmy Carter ordered them to go in and it was an absolute disaster. The, the helicopters collided in mid-air, resulting in the deaths of many, many Special Forces operatives and the pilots of those helicopters. And the, uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini was then seen gloating over the, the burnt and charred bodies of this failed rescue attempt. So they didn't get off to a very good start. They've since proved themselves in many other missions, of course. But Hollywood didn't care about, you know, look, 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 they fucked up the first time. So they, they draft in Chuck Norris and Lee Marvin, who these guys, they're bloody high-ranking Delta Force operatives, who together with an absolute army of black-clad black commandos are gonna storm into the Middle East to take back the hostages from a passenger plane which has been, you know, hijacked. And all the passengers put in separate locations in this rather nasty, you know, volatile place. So, calls for lots of these, rocket launchers, riding dune buggies with machine guns on them, 50 calibers mounted on the, on the, the, the bars, and the best of all, dare bikes with machine guns and rocket launchers attached to them. Get in there, Chuck. 
So, I'm not going to review the movie. The, the movie, the movie is a guilty pleasure. You know, it, it's totally gung ho. It's totally American with stars and bars, saber rattling, and I have not got a problem with that. I haven't. American foreign policy, it's not my issue. The movies that come out of it, they are. And I stand by them wholeheartedly. Lock! And load! So, none better than this rip-roaring theme, which I'm now going to play for you. You hear it a lot throughout the movie, and it typically will, will, will serve as the backdrop the synthesized backdrop with drum pads and all sorts, you know, lots of electro stuff going on. Whatever, the Delta Force are doing their thing, slaying bad guys, getting the getting the hostages back to safety, and just Chuck doing his thing, dressed in black, muttering through clenched teeth, with a beard that's as hard as nails, with eyes that spit in napalm, and the best goddamn hair in, in the business. <laughs> In fact, I'm not too far removed from the Chuck of old right now. And that's not a bad thing. Let's get on to this. This is the Delta Force theme. And it's all done on, on the Synclavier. So I've actually just incorporated the Synclavier and drum pads. And it's just, it's, it's synth gorgeousness. It has that sheen, that shimmering sort of, you know, warbly, Warm to it. And let's get on it, let's get on it. The Delta Force theme. You hear it several times throughout the movie, but you know. This is one of its fullest incarnations. Already. It's catchy. Don your black combats. Mount your dune buggy or your dead bike and go into battle. Machine gunning, despotic, tyrannical ragheads in every direction. Kill man's politics. uses one of these a lot. Yeah, it's addictive. Cheers, y'all. Coming next. Yep. The beat is relentless. <laughs> this, of course, had the famous sequence of Chuck Norris riding out on his own lone wolf to go and get the ringleader. The terrorist gang, played by Robert Forster, the great Robert Forster. He beats the shit out of him. <laughs> but he leaves him alive to, enough to get into his car. He's broken the guy's hands, he's broken his nose, his face, everything, every part of him is broken and fractured and rattling. He gets into his car and he's about to drive off, and Chuck is just parked over there on his bike. The guy tries to get his gun out uh, 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 to try and cap off a couple of last rounds of his nemesis and Chuck is on his bike. <sighs> Rocket launcher. <laughs> it was a Hollywood statement, you know. You know, as far as movies are concerned, you can't take America. America's just going to take you down. One man, Rambo will do it. 
Chuck can do it. You know, Steven Seagal, the, the one-man army. The reality is far, far different, of course. But I'm going to take nothing away from the real-life Delta Force. You know, we all, you know, know the Navy SEALs. I myself trained with the Royal Marines. Yes. Kiltman has a military background. And I have met US Marines and I have met a Navy SEAL or two. And they all speak very highly of Delta Force. And let's face it, if this was your anthem, you'd sign up for every battle going, wouldn't you? No, 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 we're, we're, not, we're not fighting them. We're not, they're our friends. If this music starts playing, you're going to go riding in. <laughs> did I talk over that entire theme? I think I did, didn't I? But I think you got the gist of it, didn't you, really? You know, you... That's just awesome. Awesomeness. Much awesomeness. And, uh, yeah. That's kind of all I'm going to do. <laughs> just a quick one. Just a, qu a quickie. A quickie. A kilt man quickie. And there are many who would line up for a kilt man quickie. Believe me. Um, so, what I'm going to do next, after this, um, is a touch of guilty pleasure reviews. I'm going to do some fantasy movies from the the awesome fantasy era that was the early 80s. Now, can you think what movies these are? We started off with <clears throat> Hawk the Slayer, <clears throat> but I might cover that because it's fun. <laughs> uh, Dragon Slayer. Disney's darkest, nastiest movie. Obviously, Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer, uh, Krull, you know, that sort of thing. But what I'm going to kick off with, oh, come on now, The Sword and the Sorcerer. Oh, Albert Pyan's absolute pure comic book, comic book, comic book swashbuckling blast. It's tongue-in-cheek, it's gory, it's got tits and bums, it's got everything. Everything a growing fantasy nerd really wants to see. <laughs> so, that's coming up very, very soon. Oh, as well as a review of the uh, the Blu-ray of The Meg. Big shark. Not many kills. Watered down, literally watered down. But still good fun, because it's got another one-man army in it. Jason Statham. Stay them, yes. Battling an 80 foot great white shark. <laughs> mm. So, folks, in the meantime, stay out of the water. Watch out for terrorists, because they're everywhere. And if you know someone who can fix a concierge roof, please do send them to Kiltman Mansions, because it's now getting rather serious out there. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm going to see y'all. Ooh, later! Chuck Norris! <laughs>